What's up YouTube, it's James Q Quick, and you probably already know that Visual Studio Code has some great built-in tools for working with Git and source control, but did you know that there are some amazing extensions out there to help supercharge your workflow with Git, GitHub, inside of VS Code? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the top extensions for Git and GitHub inside of VS Code, so let's go. All right, first off, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so that you can get notified when the latest content comes out and you never miss a beat. All right, that said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through one by one about six or seven different extensions that you can install in VS Code to help supercharge your Git workflow. Now, a lot of people might use some sort of GUI. Uh, I know like Tortoise Git is one I've used before or like the GitHub desktop client. A lot of people use those sort of things primarily or sometimes because they're not as familiar with the command line of doing uh, doing Git stuff in the command line. So me personally, I do almost all of my Git stuff in the command line and then I use VS Code when I need to. And I'm here to tell you that you can use VS Code to do all of your Git workflow. Anything you wanna do from basic add commit to working with branches, working with remotes, comparing diffs across different branches and things like that, you can absolutely do but you have to find the right extension. Now, as we go through this list of six or seven, stick around because the very last extension that we'll talk about will kind of encompass almost all of the things that we talk about along the way in one extension that can really help supercharge your Git workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first one is the Git history extension. So I've got uh, the majority of these extensions already installed inside of VS Code, but I just need to go in and enable them. So I didn't want this to be confusing of which extension does what. So as we go through here, through here, I'm gonna turn them on and turn them off so that we see just, uh, just what individual ones are doing. So let's turn on the Git history extension. Uh, it says this is enabled. And by the way, what project I'm looking at is my build a quiz app with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, course that you can go and check out on my YouTube channel as well. I'll put a link to that uh, in the video as well for you to check out there. So um, inside of here, I've got the readme file. With that extension ex installed, I can now come down and I see a couple of options here for Git view uh, file and line history. So if we start with uh, just the file history, this is gonna show me uh, all the different times that I said updated readme in the readme file for this course. Um, so you can go through, you can scroll through all the different commits. You can uh, click on one and see uh, the different files that changed and then even open it up and uh, view the file contents, compare against a workspace file, uh, something like that. So this will pull up a diff from uh, what that file was originally to what it is now, and it looks like it's basically the same. Uh, so if we did something like that for the readme, uh, let's do the compare against workspace file, we'll see these are the things that I've changed in that, uh, in, in that commit from that commit until now. So real quick and easy way to see the history of your file. And then also you can come in and uh, view the line, the individual line history. So how many times has that individual line changed? It looked like just once as I updated that and then here, is uh, here's what actually changed, uh, maybe nothing since then. So it looks like just that one commit in there, which is totally fine. So with Git history, you get a really quick and easy way to see the history of a line and a file. And you can do this also in your terminal or in the command palette. So command shift P and then view file history and view line history. So you get the same kind of thing just in the command palette as well. So that is extension number one, good stuff. Let's look now, let's disable that one. And then we're going to look at the git blame extension. So let's search this one and I'll just open this so you can see it looks like that's enabled. I need to restart because I disabled git history. So let's disable that one. All right, so now we need to also enable the git blame extension. So now with this thing enabled, let's uh, close the file. Let's open another one back up. And you can see at the very bottom here on the title bar, uh, we've got blame James Quick one year ago. So what Git blame is, and I think this is kind of comical how they phrase this and a little bit rude, I guess, but Git blame is giving you information on who to blame for who changed what. Uh, so what this is saying, if I open this up here, it's gonna show me the commit. I wonder if I can see some more details. Uh, it's actually gonna open it up in GitHub. So I can go to GitHub with this one. I'll see the very specific commit and I can go and look at that right in there. Now, if you combine this with something like the Git history extension, which we just looked at, you can get your history as well as the actual blame information at a quick glance of who actually changed what. 
Uh, so that is get blame, really quick and easy one there. All right, and the next one I wanna talk about is the Git project manager. So let's go into our extensions and uh, let's make sure, I think I've already disabled, Git blame is disabled. And then let's search for Git project manager. So it's this one right here. And I'll go ahead and enable that. And what this extension will do is make it really easy, as, easy for us to work with Git projects, open them um, in VS Code, open them in new instances of VS Code and just find the GitHub projects that we work with or Git projects. So for me, what I do is if I look in users, James, Quick, I have a code directory and inside of there, I have all of the projects that I uh, write code in. Uh, so all of my Git projects are in that one directory. So with the uh, GPM, uh, the Git project manager, I can uh, open the command palette, type GPM and tell it to open a Git project. And what it should do is it should iterate through a specific directory or multiple directories and look for all of the uh, projects inside of it that have a .git uh, directory, so a, a Git project. So what it's doing is it's searching through there and this might take a second. I think the reason is it's actually looking through the node modules folder, which I don't really wanna do, uh, but it's looking through there. So I'll give this a second to let it find all of my projects and then I'll come back and show you uh, how we're gonna use this. All right, so I uh, actually changed some settings here to make this go faster. And what I changed, uh, so let's open up the settings here and search Git Project Manager is uh, two things. One is how many levels deep it should go to search for projects. So instead of the default of four, I set two. And the second one is whether or not it wants to allow the ability to search for Git projects inside of other Git projects, which I said no. So as soon as it finds a Git project, it'll shut down and stop. The last property in here that I've set for the settings is the base projects folder. So this is the folder or folders where this extension will look for Git projects. This is editable in your JSON file. And so inside of here with the correct path, I did this with the incorrect path for a while and couldn't understand why it didn't work. But with the correct path in here, uh, now it's able to uh, pick up, let's open uh, the command palette again and say open Git project. Um, and I can do it in a new window. And uh, let's just choose uh, binary converter. This will open a new window of VS Code and it makes it really quick and easy to do so. So with me having all of my code projects in a code directory, makes it really quick and easy to open those projects with this extension, which is pretty nice. All right, so the next one that we're gonna talk about is open in GitHub. And this one is a little tricky to search for uh, because it's actually got a longer name. So it's open in GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, visualstudio.com. But what this one will do, let's go ahead and enable this one, is uh, inside of a file. So the readme, for example, you have a couple of options when you right click to, let's scroll down to the bottom. There's a open in GitHub link right there. So if you've ever worked on a file, just wanted to see that thing in GitHub, and do whatever in GitHub, uh, you can do that. It adds that ability and you can do it right here and it takes me right to that file. This is kind of an underrated extension because I've come across the need to do that. And once you get like into a nested file in one of these directories, going to GitHub manually yourself and doing that can be tricky. So now either inside of this file or uh, over here on this, I can open in GitHub here. I also get a um, open pull request. That's actually kind of nice as well, but open GitHub will allow me to open that directly um, inside of GitHub. So pretty straightforward, but it is a really nice one to have when you're trying to get to a file in GitHub that you have locally and you're nested in certain directories and stuff like that. All right, so speaking of, that extension allowed us, let's, uh, let's disable it for now. That extension allowed us to perform uh, or add or create pull requests. There's also a GitHub pull request extension. And this one is really nice because with this one, you can view all of your pull requests, you can handle them, you can check them out, uh, diff them with your current uh, branch that you're on and so on and so on. So super, super cool. So with GitHub pull request, uh, you'll have to sign into GitHub and I've already done this. So I'll just say, yes, that'll work. Go back to VS Code, uh, say, yes, I'm good. And now down here, it says successfully uh, signed in. And then on the panel on the left, you can see that I've got um, all the pull requests here or a list of pull requests here for me. So uh, I don't have any in here because I don't have any pull requests on this. Actually, I do. Added a YouTube, I didn't actually know this. 
added a YouTube, let's see, uh, playlist. Oh, sweet. I, this has been, this is a perfect example because I didn't know this existed. So what this pull request is, is just adding a line to the actual video playlist on YouTube, which is really nice. So with that, I can uh, check out this pull request and uh, saying this will be, your local changes will be overridden. Please, okay, so I've got some changes in here. Um, let's do it, git reset hard. And um, I need to get rid of those two files anyway. So remove quiz at master. This is just from testing stuff that I've done in the past and the test HTML. So now I wanna clean, uh, clean commit and actually looks like I'm behind or not push. Let us pull the latest thing. Okay, so now we're good. Now uh, let's open up, right click and check out this pull request. Um, it will uh, switch over and allow me inside of here to see now I've got this thing here. So that works. And now that we know that uh, that pull request is something that we actually want to merge, uh, you can come down to uh, the changes in pull request tab. You can uh, open up the actual pull request itself. You can see all of the, uh, all the comments, all the commits. Uh, you can see I'm in preview mode, which is where I've checked out uh, that commit and it's basically uh, letting me preview that commit or that uh, pull request locally so I can see if it works for me. And then if I uh, scroll down, I've actually got a, uh, a merge pull request function and it says this merge has no conflicts, which is great. So I can handle my pull request here, leave comments there. Uh, let's do create merge commit, see if that finished and uh, pull request successfully merged. So let's look at the source code for this, the build a quiz app. And notice on this readme, there's not a, uh, a link. And if we uh, refresh this, looks like we might've missed something. And I think what we needed to do is go ahead and exit the review mode. And let's get back to our master branch and let's do a git pull. And let's see if that's now got, yeah, now it's got the YouTube playlist in here. Uh, so uh, looks like this is up to date and is already pushed. So we've handled that uh, pull request with this extension, which is really pretty neat to be able to take that workflow from uh, inside of GitHub and bring it right inside of VS Code. Now, the second to last extension that I wanna show you is really kind of an amalgamation, amalgamation, amalgamation. One of those is the right word, I think. Uh, but basically putting all of these things together. Uh, so we've got the Git extension pack, and I won't go uh, into detail about this because it's pretty straightforward, but what it does, is it will uh, go ahead and install several of those for you. So it will install Git history, uh, project manager. Project manager is similar to the GitHub project manager that we looked at earlier uh, in that it lets you switch between projects. They don't necessarily have to be Git projects. The Git lens extension, we'll talk about that in a second. The Git ignore extension, this will uh, give you language support for Git ignore files, so that's really nice to have. And then the open in GitHub Bitbucket VisualStudio.com, one that we talked about earlier as well. So if you want to kind of take several of those and bundle them together, uh, this extension pack is a great way to do that. And then lastly, uh, the Git Lens extension. Now this one is, is by far the most powerful and just really amazing. So what this one does, let's go ahead and enable that one. And let's look inside of a file now. Git Lens extension does all the things that you could basically ever imagine. So. Um, notice I've got git blame history right here. So it, uh, I changed this line three months ago, shows me the commit. If I hover, now I see details of when it was committed, the commit number, the, uh, the, the actual change that took place. I can uh, go and look at maybe the changes here and now I can get a diff right inside of VS Code that way. Uh, I've also got the git lens, git lens extension uh, over here where I can see the repositories that I'm working with uh, the file history, so it can replace that file history uh, extension. It can replace git blame extension. Um, I think it might actually give me some uh, options in here to open things in GitHub as well. And uh, just so many amazing things. One of my favorite features is the compare across branches. So if you have multiple branches or tags, you can compare your file uh, files across different branches, which is just so incredibly cool. So the Git Lens extension, this is the one that I've been kind of building up to. This is the one that can kind of replace almost all of the other ones um, in your VS Code workflow. So for me personally, I have enabled the GitHub pull request extension as well as the Git Lens extension. And then I, I might also include the open in GitHub extension as well if that option is not a part of Git Lens. But Git Lens has so many different options, it can replace most of those for you. 
So if you're um, if you're just looking to use VS Code to handle your Git and GitHub workflow, you can absolutely do it. Uh, it's got great built-in Git tools. We talked about that video before, but then also the extensions that you can download can just really take you over the top. So I'm curious, question of the day, uh, what are you using to interact with Git and Source Control and GitHub? Do you use a client of some sort? Do you use VS Code? Do you just go straight to the terminal like I do most of the time? Uh, and do you have any of these extensions installed and which ones are your favorite? Are we missing any? So uh, leave your answer to any of those questions, any and all of those questions in the comment. I wanna thank you for checking out the video and I will catch you in the next one.